Alrighty, welcome everyone to day one of Advent to Code. It is about to begin. We got seven and a half minutes here. If you are not interested in this whole intro, you must just want to skip ahead to my actual solving and the problems. There will be a link to the description below as well as kind of chaptered in the video playback. So feel free to skip ahead to those. For those of you who are new to this or are want to see the intro, um, welcome again to day one of Advent to Code. If you don't know what Advent to Code is, um, I made a whole video last week about what it is and what my plans are for all of this. So feel free to check out that video. But uh, at any rate, yeah. So I'm assuming you know what Advent to Code is. Day one's begin here in a bit. I will note that before I begin, I do have some base code I'm working with. Uh, all my problems will be done in Java. I'll be working in Java to solve these. Um, so there is some base code in this, mainly loading in the files of the inputs and all that. Um, I'll be copying them manually, but I'm going to be pasting them into these text files um, that get auto read. And then this solve method gets called basically just a bunch of under the hood stuff. That way I can kind of uh, ignore all of that uh, painstaking stuff of Java, of the verboseness of loading in files and getting all that. So uh, I do have some of this. All this code will be linked on GitHub, including all this base code. So if you're curious, it's not a whole lot. Um, again, mostly just file loading, sending that to the solve method. I have some like fancy timing stuff for seeing how fast things execute and whatnot. Uh, nothing too big. Um, but just know that it might look a bit weird, but it's for the most part nothing too fancy, just some base code. So at any rate, I'm going to wait here for the problem to be released. When that goes, we will begin. Hopefully these videos are entertaining enough. I will be trying my best to solve them. And then after I get both parts finished to then come back at the end and explain my solution. Um, and as the days go on, I'll progressively get a little more vague and a little more high level on them. But for at least for today and day one, if you're a new programmer, this should be an excellent uh, question for you or problem for you to solve. I will try my best to go through kind of each line step by step to really kind of um, explain what it does for the newer newer programmers to get a better uh, feel of how to code and how I did my code. So at any rate, a few minutes here, I will be waiting and I will catch you guys when this timer is about to hit zero. Okay, 13 seconds here. It should be released in a second. Fingers crossed that the servers don't go down from overload. I'm gonna try and get in, grab my input right away. That way I can copy it over and then read. It'll be go ahead. Anyways, day one. Okay, is <laughs> the intro. Um, the submarine drops below the surface of the ocean automatically performs a sonar sweep of the nearby sea floor. A small screen, the sonar sweep reports to your puzzle input appears. Each line is a measurement on the sea floor depth as the sweep takes further and further away from the submarine. Um, oh, I do need to grab this. Okay. Well, here's my puzzle. Puck. Okay. I am just like, yeah, I'm not like with, <laughs> I'm not in the advent of code mindset right now. Anyways, um, this report indicates that scanning outwards from the submarine, the sonar sweep found the depth of 199, 200, 208, 210, so on. Uh, the first order of business is to figure out how quickly the depth increases, just so you know what you're dealing with. You never know if the keys will get carried to a deeper ocean. Okay. To do this, count the number of times the depth measurement increases from the previous measurement. There is no measurement before the first. Okay. Um, so we're just going through and we're seeing how many increases. Okay, this is not that bad. So. Let's go to day one. So what we're gonna do is first, we're going to actually um, convert to uh, convert to ints. So I'm just gonna make this a list of integers real quick. Um, so I'm just gonna take our input and we're just gonna convert it straight up to integers that way, because it's all dealing with numbers. So what we're gonna do for this, actually it's gonna be pretty simple. We're just gonna go through all of this, uh, grab the depth, um, you know what, we're gonna do this differently. We're gonna do for int i equals zero. This is probably gonna be a little bit easier. Or uh, we'll look a little bit better. Um, while i is less than depth dot size, i plus plus, so we're gonna go through all the depths. Uh, we're actually gonna start at one, because again, the first depth doesn't have one before it, so you can't check if that one's greater. Um, so we're gonna start at one, and we'll go through all of them. And what we're gonna do is our check is gonna be if the depth of the one before, so i minus one, is less than depth of i. I don't know why I did add. That's what we get. If that's the case, we're going to increment a variable. Um, I'm going to call this changes. I think it's the wrong thing. It's supposed to be the count. But this is we're going to do changes. We're just going to go ahead and increment it. And then I'm just going to output this. Uh, lap is just my kind of timing thing. So if I go ahead and run this, 
we should get how many times it's changed and we submit that and there we go hey nice and easy for part one part two uh, considering every single measurement isn't as useful as expected, there is just too much noise in the data. Considering the sums of the three measurements sliding window, again, yeah, it's just three sliding, okay, makes sense. Um, ABC, it's a three. I mean, four? Yeah, whatever. Um, start by comparing the first and second uh, three measurement windows. The measurements in the first window are marked A. Oh, A window, B window, I gotcha. Ha ha ha. Um, okay. Uh, so your goal now is to uh, count the number of times the sum of measurements and sliding windows increase. Okay, so going back to our code, so we need to kind of sum the groups into three, add them up, and then go with that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do very similar to this, um, but instead of just straight up comparing this depth, we're actually gonna start at three again because you, you, this is the first depth you can't do it, but Oh, how do we want to do this? So it's going to be, we're going to have to take the sliding window. Let's just go ahead and convert this. Actually, you know what? Let's just straight up convert this and we're going to convert this into the windows and then do it that way. So we're going to do this instead. We're going to do a list of integer, well, if I can spell. And it's going to be windows. There might be a little bit quicker way to do this or a little bit more efficient way, but we're going to do it this way. So we're going to go through all the windows and we're going to do windows add and it's going to be uh, depths. Oops, nope, not depths. Depths get i plus depths dot get i minus one plus depths dot get i minus two. So basically take those three, sum them together, add it into this windows here. Um, and then we're gonna go once again, right, we're gonna use changes again, and we're actually gonna just do this exact same process, but instead of going over depths, we're gonna use windows, and this will then compare the windows as opposed to the depths. And if we go ahead and run this, um, while also putting, outputting what our value is again, for part two, we should get a second number, and that doesn't seem right to me, but it is, okay. <laughs> Anyways, there we go. Day one complete. I don't know why that seemed wrong to me. I guess I was expecting it to go up. But I guess it does make sense it could. At any rate, there we go, the first two parts. Now that we've done this, let's go back through. Let me explain this more kind of line by line again. The first few days, I'm going to be explaining them much more in depth. As they get harder, I'll be less in depth. But for the first day, since they're much more of a beginner level question, I'm going to try and do this much more in depth for hopefully newer programmers can understand. So. TLDR of the problem is we're given this big long list of inputs. Um, our goal is to look at each input and figure out if the input before it is lower than the index. So in this case, we're still here. We need to know if this 141 is, is less than 140. In this case, it's not. And we need to sum up how many of those are matching where the second one is lower than the one before it. Terrible explanation, but question does a pretty good job of explaining it. Anyways, to solve this, we have to go through and basically we're just going to take all our inputs, convert it to integers again to make it easier for us. And then we're just gonna go through one by one in a, in that list and take the index we're at. So we're starting the first index again, the zeroth index, start at zero. Zeroth index does not have a in a number before. There's no there's no position before the zeroth index. So we start with the first index and we say, take the first index. Is it greater than the number that comes before it? If it is, we just increment our changing uh, number here to increment that this one does match this case. And we just keep going through that whole process, going through all of the indexes, grab the index, grab the one before it, comparing them. If it's greater, increment our changes variable here and then output it. Pretty simple, pretty um, basic. Um, nothing too complex here. The second part though is the same exact um, kind of problem, but instead of just looking at the previous one, we're instead taking three depths in a rolling window, adding them all together, and then comparing it to the previous rolling window. To do this, uh, in, do this we first take all the depths and we kind of create those rolling windows and create a new list of those rolling window values. 
So we start at index two, because again, rolling windows of three variables or three uh, values in each rolling window. Start the second one to get our first rolling window, go to the next index, grab the previous three for a rolling window, keep going through the rolling windows. Sum up all the numbers, add to this windows uh, list, and then we do the exact same process we just did, but instead we're doing it on the windows list. Now we're comparing all of the indexes in the windows list as opposed to all the indexes in the just straight up depths. So again, same process, go through each one, start the first index, is this index greater than the one before it? If it is, update our changes variable to reflect that this is matching our case. So nothing too complex today, again, very pretty basic. Um, the only kind of trick here is understanding how to handle this rolling windows. I think doing it this way of creating a new list is kind of easier to understand and the fact that both problems are the exact same. It's just getting those three values converted into one and then into a new list to do the whole process over again. So at any rate, there we go. Those are our problems. My code will be posted on GitHub. Feel free to try this out and I'll see you guys all tomorrow for day two.